Invincible. Co-founder, Emergence Media. Hip-hop icon, creative change agent, paradigm shifter, enlightened warrior. First SVN conference, woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Works at the intersection of cultural innovation, community restoration, and cooperative economics. Areas of brilliance, prolific lyricism, masterful experiential design, robust community engagement, and courageous, conscientious trailblazing. And my quote for Invincible is, people are aware that they cannot continue in the same old way, but are immobilized because they cannot imagine an alternative. We need a vision that recognizes that we are at one of the great turning points in humanity and in human history, when the survival of our planet and the restoration of our humanity require a great sea change in our ecological, economic, political, and spiritual values. Grace Lee Boggs, Invincible. Every city is a body and a living organism. Every neighborhood a vital organ, every block a cell. Every person in the city is an organelle. Gotta know your history if you want to fortune tell. Every city is a body and a living organism. Every neighborhood a vital organ, every block a cell. Every person in the city is an organelle. Gotta know your history if you want to fortune tell. In Detroit, Detroit is my home. And Detroit is a complex living system for sure, just like all our communities are. Detroit is a context that I make my work. And in this time of displacement, of school closings, of land grabs, of state-appointed emergency managers usurping voting rights from every majority black city in the state of Michigan and declaring bankruptcy in Detroit, we're in a time of crisis in our city. And our great liberation movement legacy and movement legacy for both music and art and community organizing is under threat, but still alive and well. And, the, and my home in Detroit, my community, is this group Detroit Summer I've been working with for over 10 years. And Detroit Summer is a youth-led collective for social justice and change that does community organizing using creative approaches. It was co-founded by De uh, Grace Lee Boggs, where the beautiful quote from Rock came. And one of our main projects is the Live Arts Media Project, where young people look at the crises that they face, that they're most targeted by. They generate questions, they interview one another, and then those stories that they collect inform and inspire uh, multimedia projects that, that move towards creative action and changing conditions, such as this mural project that you see here that they, we pasted all over the city, and here is displayed at the Queens Museum of Art in New York, and is about um, counteracting media misrepresentations of our city. And this is one of many projects they've done. We also created together um, a CD that looks at the education crisis in our city. It's called Rising Up from the Ashes, Chronicles of a Dropout. And um, it's an audio hip hop documentary looking at the school's crisis. They've created um, video documentaries and other projects. And then they don't just stop at those projects, they've also created um, workshops, curriculum. We took that curriculum on tour um, around the Midwest, around the country, and even to Palestine, where we collaborated between youth from Detroit and youth from the West Bank to create their own media and exchange lessons with our communities. That same approach, that same pedagogy of including community in our creation process is what I apply to Emergence Media, which is uh, my company um, that I started in 2007 that integrates cooperative economics, fair trade principles into media and art making. And uh, one of our first releases was Locus, a docu music video that collected stories similarly to Detroit Summer, but around the issue of displacement. And um, we've also released many other projects, including a couple albums that I have with me, if y'all want to check them out later. And um, my work with Detroit Summer over the past decade plus led me to, in 2010, be brought on to a new project called Detroit Future. And Detroit Future is a network citywide 
and myself and Alea Harvey Quinn, longtime youth organizers in the city, were um, brought on to help found and coordinate the citywide network of 12 youth social justice media-based organizations, very small scale, usually weren't receiving funding, and most situations will be pitted against each other for the minimal crumbs put out there for social justice-based youth work. And in this scenario, I helped coordinate monthly gatherings for us to come together, like the ones you see here, to create work together, to exchange resources. And then over the course of the two-year process, we were able to not just form this deep relationship amongst all these groups and cross-pollinate all these brilliant ideas, but also create a product out of it. And this is our Detroit Future Youth curriculum mixtape that with Ra and Move the Crowd support, we were able to create as a collective fundraising tool, right, to not just rely on grants, but also collectively fundraise together, and more so than that, be able to share these incredible media projects and workshops that young people in Detroit were creating in order to tell a different story about the city and in order to propel people to take action for a different story that we were um, creating in our lives. And this Detroit Future Youth Network of the Youth Social Justice Organization is just one of three parts of Detroit Future Network. And Detroit Future Network um, is composed of many, many organizations that incorporate media and technology justice into their work in the community in Detroit. And one of the other layers is Detroit Future Media, which takes people of all ages and um, helps support them in, in creating their own media and gaining media skills, business skills, entrepreneurship skills, um, as well as you know making websites, making graphics, making audio, video pieces that they can integrate into small businesses in the city of Detroit, into their own community organizing projects, and also as part of the third arm of Detroit Future Network, Detroit Future Schools, where um, folks that have gone through Detroit Future Media get partnered up with teachers throughout public schools and other schools in Detroit, and then create curriculum that integrates media and social justice into whatever their topic of choice is, whether it's science or math or language arts or history, et cetera. And all those parts are connected to a larger network of networks called the Detroit Digital Justice Coalition. And um, I can go on and on about the many networks and decentralized, incredible small-scale projects happening in our city. Um, but what I will say about this particular network, Detroit Future, is that you know after my two years of um, you know working uh, as a paid organizer there, and now I continue to be part of the network as a participant, um, shortly after. <laughs> I left that position a little over a year ago. The city's development plan, top-down master development plan, um, decided that they, after hiring many folks from our network to consult them, would take our name and um, decided to call it Detroit Future City. It's a very controversial plan. And since then, there's been some negotiations about you know, li them licensing the name and certain things that could come out of that benefit. But this raised some really important questions for all of us, not just about who owns the name Detroit Future City or the trademark for it. That's not the point. The bigger question that it raised for all of us was, who owns the future of Detroit? And who owns the future of all of our communities? And for us to really start to ask those hard questions and be able to start to wonder, um, you know, what is possible for this future? And so I wanted to share some, some, some really new thoughts. I'm gonna actually read them for you so that I get them, I get them right. But I just had this epiphany about it yesterday um, that basically, you know, with displacement and colonialism, which is what's happening in Detroit and many communities around the globe, as all you are familiar with, it's not just the current or past tense phenomenon, but many of these forces are actually planning well in advance, you know, 50, 100 years, you know, empire building plans, right, to be able to displace folks, to be able to gain and dominate as much as possible. Unfortunately, that's how they're looking forward. But in our communities, we're often in reaction and response to what they're doing and not able to be able to... Um, actually envision what we want to see. And so that resistance work is very important, but it's also important to be able to envision what we want to see. And in Detroit, we have this thing happen, I don't know if it happens in your communities, but a lot of people come in and they're speculators. So they buy land and then they sit on it. They sit on it and they, and they sit on it for ages. I mean, my friend who works at the land bank told me she talked to some speculators from Japan who had bought a whole block cash down from the bank for recently foreclosed buildings. She said, what do you plan to do with those buildings? She, they said, ask us in 30 years. Call me suspicious, but in 30 years, Detroit has some of the world's 
fresh water, actually 20% of the world's fresh water is the Great Lakes, which Detroit River is all connected to on the St. Lawrence International Seaway. So we're looking at some very speculative land grabbing happening that's part of, of course, very um, close you know, benefits as far as liquid assets and other things, but down the line, right, thinking what is the value of that land and what is the bigger end game for these speculators. But we get to be speculators too. And um, I mean that in the science fiction sense of the word, right? Because I'm a big, uh, you know, a big inspiration of mine is Octavia Butler, actually a good friend of mine, Adrienne Marie Brown, who's based in Detroit, who some of you may know, um, is working with Walida and Marisha to create an anthology of social justice-based science fiction writing called Octavia's Brood. We have a lot of, Af um, like, just a whole, a whole slew of influences from Detroit that are based in Afrofuturism. There's a new project called Afrotopia looking at that. And, and so a lot of those ideas are, are influences and in thinking about this question of how do we speculate our future, both to fully understand like what the dystopic possibilities are of these current injustices that are happening, hyperbolized like down the line, but also to be able to start to envision what our ideal realities will be, and more importantly, how we get there. And how do we model those visions in the process? So I think, I think about it like, like this idea of a speculative decolonialism, and how do we start to speculate and advance you know, the democracy and decolonization that we want to work towards. So along those lines, uh, I came together after years of community organizing and, and, and heartbreaking trauma that comes with community organizing. Um, began to come together with a collective called Complex Movements. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about Complex Movements. So Complex Movements um, is a Detroit-based collective composed of myself, uh, Wesley Taylor, um, Wajid, and Carlos Garcia. And um, we all do different mediums. And we came together along with a producer named Sage Crump who looks at art and social justice. And in 2006, we were inspired by a speech given by Grace Lee Box, who's a mentor of mine, 98-year-old activist philosopher. And she talked about the connections between quantum physics and social movements and the importance of small-scale projects for change as interconnected networks. And so we started going into nerdery, researching these ideas, reading all these science books. I was like the furthest from a science head, and then that's all I care about now, if you ever want to geek out with me. Then we be moving into geekery, tinkering, experimenting, applying these ideas into technologies and our artistic practices. And then in 2011, we had our first iteration of expressing these in the Detroit Science Center, which was shortly after foreclosed and then privatized. And this was an event called Quantum Leap, and we integrated um, interactive objects and sculptural pieces into the performance. Then we moved into this music box, about 10 inches tall, that expresses a song called Apple Orchards, and we made 100 of these music boxes and hand-soldered them to look at the interactive possibility of, of, of a song. And then we moved to this piece uh, that was actually at a, a, a festival called Art Prize in Grand Rapids, and we created an eight-foot music box. So we took that 10-inch music box, made it eight feet tall, where you could trigger it with these pads. You see the young youth jumping on. And then we actually separated our performance from the audience by standing behind this wall, and which is corrugated and then projected on. Now with our new piece, Beware of the Dandelions, which is our current piece that I'm going to be talking the most about, we actually separated the performers from the audience again inside a 400 square square foot pod that's projected upon from 180 degrees and then we're in an adjacent space and projected onto it live. In this past summer, we actually did a, a work in progress residency of Beware the Dandelions at the African American History Museum in Detroit, the Charles Wright, where we experimented generative elements, um, interactive game design elements, and performed over 20 times for audience and community feedback, doing several workshops and et cetera. So that experience was really vital for us to understand this idea of scale, how we could take a song called Apple Orchards that I'll share with you shortly, and essentially scale it up to the size of a building. Similarly to how all the small scale projects the folks in this room are up to and the folks in my community are doing, can actually scale across through relationships to these really amazing intertwined paradigm shifts, right, for our whole society and how we think about what is possible for humans and, and everything we're connected to. And so all these ideas like scale are actually emblematic to the themes of Beware the Dandelions. And this is like a quick clip of some of the emblems and symbols that represent the theory of change that guides this work. And they're all basically drawn, as, um, drawn from metaphors within complex systems. 
So looking at ferns and the idea of scale. And I know that here in the SVN community, you're really interested in, in, in being able to align your vision on every scale, right? Like hearing the incredible presentation that you just shared and how on every level, right, you're thinking from the, from the whole life cycle to how the folks are engaging with it on every level that it's really aligned with your values. And I think that that's a powerful, powerful thing to witness here in this room. And of course, there's always new contradictions that arise. And so we have to constantly be asking ourselves, how can we continue to be more in alignment with our vision? And the fern represents that. And similarly, you know, the question of uncertainty and the value of uncertainty. And this is the wave and particle, or we call it the wavicle, um, that helps us to, you know, really explore the idea of reflection, of uncertainty, of being able to value both process and product. Um, these are the starlings looking at, um, you know, collective partnership and leadership models and how we flock. So Beware of the Dandelions includes all those, and you can geek out with me about it later if you want to know about the rest. And through Beware of the Dandelions, we're creating a science fiction parable, and that science fiction parable essentially uh, is, is told through this pod, this 400-square-foot pod, and here's some images from our work-in-progress run, and you see these interactive technologies, high-tech sensors, we have low-tech, you know, objects that we print, and for people to engage with and interact, and they're actually immersed in this environment that is conveying these values and allowing everyone that's participating an opportunity to embody these ideas and values in this imaginative space that can stretch our imagination like Einstein was saying, beyond just our current knowledge. And we're doing this to change the way people make change, reimagine revolution, reimagine social justice movements, and move beyond false binaries. We're doing this to highlight community-led social justice movements in Detroit and other communities that we tour with this piece. We're doing this to disrupt the idea of community organizing and, and social justice work being separate from art and, and, and seeing those as interconnected and to push ourselves creatively in every way, both as people working for change in social justice and as artists. And so with this piece, we're really uh, trying to mash in as many layers as possible, make it as complex as possible while still having a coherent story that embodies these ideas. And it functions in three modes as a performance, which we're now calling a live experience, and we're working with game developers and designers to create. And then we're also um, having an installation mode, like this will be up for a month in each community with all three of these modes. So the installation mode serves as like an art exhibit that you can come in and has pieces of the performance. And in community workshops and curriculum that we're developing with various community groups and we'll customize locally to each community we travel and we'll support local organizing and change work um, on many, many different facets and layers. So I wanna close out with a song. Um, I wanna share with you a piece that, um, that is basically the theme song for Beware the Dandelions, and it's called Apple Orchards, that, that song that led to all those other layers. So one sec, let me just set it up for you. So this song is, is, is um, a story of, again, co-optation, like I was talking about earlier. There's a situation in Detroit that my, some, some of you may have heard of. We have the fastest growing and one of the largest urban gardening movements in the country. Thousands of people are gardening and feeding themselves. And that started with African-American elders in the late 70s and, and early 80s called the Gardening Angels that started growing food on empty lots to feed themselves. And then Detroit Summer was one of the first groups to get involved with that movement and be begin to involve youth. And many other groups were doing this and it just became something that people took on and also that people that came up from the South in the Great Migration, you know, Detroit is 80% black city, right? So folks that came up with those skill sets and were growing their own food because of lack of access to healthy food were able to do. Then in the 90s, that became a nonprofit sector issue, right? So all these nonprofits popped up that were starting to do that type of gardening work, but getting grants for it. And more and more, the nonprofits doing that work did not reflect in leadership the communities they were serving. And there was a lot of great intentions and a lot of contradictions, but it still was great work. And then, eventually, some corporate folks started noticing. And next thing you know, you have a five-page spread in Forbes magazine of a bank investor that has none of the values of this room that's deciding to create a farm in the middle of the city. Because why not? The city just literally gave them hundreds of acres for pennies a yard, right by the water. And so as we think about these ideas and we start to 
hyperbolize them, what happens in 30 years, in 100 years? Who, who benefits from that? Who gets um, you know, the short end of that deal? And, um, and, and really, how do we get to the root causes, right? And so as we look at the movements now for food justice and all the work that y'all are doing that incorporates all these ideas, how do we really embody in, 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 in a real way um, that kind of process, that holistic systems thinking process? And look at the root causes, like Anurag talks about with his project being more the root causes for what's creating these injustices. So this song, Apple Orchards, was inspired by that farm that was originally supposed to be an apple orchard. And um, we created this music box, so I'll sh show it to you now. I don't know if y'all can see it, you come up later, but this is a, a print that the youth from Detroit Summer made and it features themselves and Grace Lee Boggs and I just wanted to bring them into the space with us because they, um, my family, and, and inform all this work. I didn't come up with this on my own. Um, and then this is the music box that we made by hand in our little sweatshop on the east side of Detroit, soldered all our fingerprints off. and. Um, Learned a lot about, uh, what'd you say, you gotta fail like half the time or you're not on the growing edge? We were on a real, like, we were on the leading edge of some new stuff. <laughs> we got, we had a lot of ones that didn't work. But this one, this one worked. That's the wave of right? You gotta fail to learn. All right, so, let's see if this mic wants to fail or not. All right. You ready for me with the sound? One sec, I might have a treat for you. I might have a special deluxe treat for you, actually. <laughs> What's about to happen? Let's see. Let's see if the um, computer feels like working and being our friend. So complex movements, usually we do this piece inside like this dome and you're surrounded by this, so just imagine that right now. But for the sake of you know these two projection screens that y'all spent so much time putting up, we have a version of it um, that's made for that. Um, so let me pull that up for you so that you can get a sense of some of the incredible graphics um, that are part of this piece. Turn that up. Everyone get your ones in the air. Stand up if you're able. We are all the ones we've been waiting for, like he said, was saying last night, like June Jordan said, like the one with South Africa said. So you're gonna wave side to side like you're the orchestrator. We all the orchestrators, let's go. Behind a bar, wire fence, electrify, gate control, temperature, perfect the climb, make town surround and pays a dollar, but drop of water, the trees, thirst, quenching, hydrate, genetic, engineer, synthetically, extend your years, even bigger skeptics bite, bait, workers can't afford it, if you eat when you get tortured, apples marketed at high rates, town creatures start to meet in secrecy, plan a way to overthrow the grounds, keep us figure how to interfere with frequency, the security surrounds, sound speakers send a message out, quick to be a sound, vandals of crime, lands on the line, Proclaim, beware of the dandelion Made an escape for ample time Hey, have you seen the apple orchards Where the trees were trapped and tortured But they keep the captives gorgeous, gorgeous Hey, have you seen the apple orchards Where the trees were trapped and tortured But they keep the captives gorgeous, gorgeous Y'all wanna see the change? Say, we gotta be the change Everybody, y'all wanna see the change? Say, Louder, y'all wanna see the change? Say, we gotta be the change. Everybody, y'all wanna see the change? Say, it's the ground, hard in the freezing, no banquets around, starving the season in bushels and pounds. Harvest the region, no garden for eating, the garden is treason. It takes even ones with the rotten skin, peeling with apple size cotton gin, plop them in. A gold plated box will be well with it, stocked in the no lady drops, hasn't eaten in months. Malnourished, grounds but throws it right out of the fortress, lands on the snow and the smelting beneath her. All of it glows with the light of her features. First on the spring, yellow and green, whispers to one, tells her to dream. Her last time 
when you wish last living breath means it were all of us cells in the genes hey have you seen the apple orchards where the trees were trapped and tortured then we lit a match and torched it torched it hey have you seen the apple orchards where the trees were trapped and tortured then we lit a match and torched it torched it say let it burn 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 down to the ground say let it burn let it burn let it burn blow a granddaddy dandelion make a wish strands of flying pollinate and drift life is shambles crying but you fake a twist expand your mind and let your candle shine like waistband of Orion. greatest way could lift a grand design tectonic place could shift instead of being trapped controlled and grown in rolls we the wild seeds are overthrow dreams take root deep in the soil cracking the street reach like sequoias interdependent new ecosystem babies and wombs in the fetal position soon as it blooms people will listen call it a weed the best disguise still can't be stopped by pesticides or seeds of doubt that's in the rise hey have you seen the apple orchards where the trees were trapped and tortured now the seeds brought back the forest forest hey have you seen the apple orchards where the trees were trapped and tortured now the weeds are helping flourish flourish say let it grow 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 from the ground up, say let it grow. 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 Beware of the dandelions, yeah.